Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains. That's in Missouri, in the USA. Today, we're trying something a little different. Let's call it Test Equipment Thursday because, well, I'm releasing this on Thursday. This was actually suggested by a viewer a few videos ago where he asked about this Omite oh Decade resistance box that I was using. And I mentioned that I had another style too. So I thought we'd take a look at these, a couple instruments from my bench, and we'll see what they do and what they look like inside. Why don't we start with this Omite oh box first? Excuse the unconventional layout of the multimeter here, but everything fit in the shot nicely this way and it got rid of the glare from the screen. The idea behind a decade box is pretty simple. I have a bunch of resistors in here and a bunch of switches and we can dial in the exact resistance at the output terminals by setting the switches. For instance, I have 1K turned on here and I'm reading 1K on the meter. As my meter has not been calibrated in more than 20 years, this isn't going to be an exact reading, but that's pretty darn close. I can add 20 more K, and we now have 21 K. Same thing here, I can add a few tenths of an ohm. There we go. So this lets you dial in a resistance very precisely for testing things. For example, we use this to test the amount of input resistance that a Commodore 64 or Commodore 128 could put up with on the, the keyboard circuit. This particular resistance box was made by Omite. Now up until let's say five or six years ago, they still had this on their website, but now they no longer do. They've got a, a cheaper version. And this one has 0.1% precision resistors in it. I bought this used on eBay now five or six years ago, I think for about $50, and I had to do some repairs. Let's take this apart and have a look inside and we'll see how it works and we'll see what repairs were needed. Okay, here we go. Here's our resistance box. Now on the bottom, there are some rubber feet. Now these screws just hold these feet on. And there's also a second bottom so you could set this thing like this, like we had it. We could tilt it back on its back, either one. Let's take it apart. We need to take off this set of rubber feet. I was thinking this morning, I think I may have replaced these rubber feet when I got it. I don't remember exactly. Now I'm going to try to slip this out of here. Okay, I'll slide it out kind of even. And then we can stick it on the feet. It was getting caught on the bolts for the other feet. Here is the inside of our unit. Yes, we have six rotary switches that have resistors mounted around the periphery, directly soldered to the switch terminals. No extraneous wiring here. And all of these, the red ones and the blue ones, are actual Omite resistors. When I got it, some of these in the 1K range were burnt out because some silly person had run way too much current through here. Omite did not make this series of resistor anymore, but I found some Vache resistors that were very, very similar, and a nice engineer at Omite confirmed that they would do a good job. And the dial is just a painted piece of aluminum that rotates when you rotate the switch. These look to be some sort of silver alloy switch. They're really low resistance. They do the job nicely. And here we can see how all that's soldered together. It's got some nice heavy wire. This is just a ground terminal that grounds out the chassis to keep the noise down if you're doing a really sensitive measurement. All in all, this has been a really good investment. This is one of those pieces of kit that you don't need a lot, but when you do, it is worth its weight in gold. What do you say we look at that other decade box now? This beast is by a company called Muirhead. This was made in England. I'm guessing in the 1960s. You can see from the label here, it says it's a voltage dividing resistance box. And it mentions 10K here. And this one's got five terminals. Well, this is ground. This one's labeled input. And this is labeled output. So what the heck kind of arrangement is this? 
this box is very clever. It puts a constant 10k ohm load on the input and it acts like a voltage divider, giving you a variable output voltage here. And you might be thinking, okay, Bert, that's great. What the heck is a voltage divider? Well, I'm glad you asked. So you may have seen a circuit something like this before. You have a voltage source and ground, and you wire a couple of resistors in between them, and you tap off between them, and your voltage out will be a proportion of the voltage in based on the ratio of the two resistances right here. So you can vary these resistors and get a different voltage out. This is basically like a fixed potentiometer. If this had a wiper and it wiped across a single resistance like that, you'd have a potentiometer. This box was made to provide a way to get a very precise voltage output that was a scaled version of the voltage input back when there wasn't a lot of ways to do that. And we'll take this apart and see what it looks like inside. One other thing I'd like to point out is you notice it's got all the calibration stickers on it. So this was used in a laboratory somewhere for many years. I like how they kind of hid their metal name label. It's in a metal engraved label. They hit that on the bottom of the unit. Okay, I got all those flathead screws out of there. Carefully extract that from the box. This is a nice aluminium, fully welded up box. Now behold the beauty of the inside of this thing. Take a look at that and take a look at the carnage. Oh, this broke my heart to see this. These are all hand wound, very precise resistors. And some fool put too much current through here and burnt this whole section out. It just breaks my heart. Look at the wiring from the terminals. It's all solid bits of wire. Look at that. Oh, it moves so smooth. This is just so beautifully made. This is some type of wood composite shaft in here. It's not even a metal shaft. I know you can't feel that. The switch on the Omite unit was kind of chunky and it did the job. This is just smooth. It's just a joy to use it. So all the switches are the same. And see we've got our solid wiring at this end too. All hand wound resistors. And you'll notice there's little blobs of solder in different places, slightly different places on these. So to calibrate the resistor after it was wound, they would slightly move where that was soldered on there to slightly adjust the resistance. And I did a lot of research on rewinding these. One problem is getting the right wire. It's not nichrome wire, and the exact name is escaping me, but getting the proper type of wire and then having the skill to wrap it around there and then being able to uh, calibrate each resistance range separately. I would love to do that. I think I might be stuck with using some modern 0.1% precision resistors to replace this section. But I sure would love to pluck up the courage someday to try to rewind these. If anybody out there knows anything about that, or you know somebody that does, I sure would like to talk to you to find out how that's done or to find somebody that can do it. This section of this thing probably weighs two kilos, you know, close to five pounds. And it has another trick up its sleeve. If you don't hook up anything to the input and you hook up to the output, you can't use this as a regular decade box. But its main purpose was as a voltage divider to provide a calibration voltage for other instrumentation or to compare to some other measurement that you were taking. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this look at a couple pieces of the test gear from my bench. Neither one is new, 
Neither one is particularly fancy, but I'm sure glad to have them. I use this Omite quite a bit when I need a decade box. It works very well. It's a very nice piece of equipment. It's well built. If you can pick one up reasonably that works, I would suggest it. It's much better than the modern little plastic boxes with the cheap switches. This mirror head I sure would like to fix up someday. Uh, I may go ahead and put in the modern replacement resistors, but if you have any information about rewinding those wire resistors, I sure would like to talk to you. If you know somebody that does that or has some experience or knows where to get the wire, let me know. I would appreciate it. I would like to take a moment to thank folks who support the channel through Patreon and other means. If you'd like to find out more information about how you could support the Hate Burt channel, look in the description box below. Say, if you're a subscriber, thank you. I really appreciate it. If you're not, take a look down below and you'll notice a rectangular button that says subscribe of all things in it. And if you click on that guy, you too will be subscribed to the Hate Burt channel. And then you might notice a bell-shaped icon. If you click on that bell, YouTube will be nice enough to let you know just as soon as I post a new video. If you'd like to see more of these weekly mini episodes about some of the test gear I've got on my bench, let me know in the comments section down below. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, bye.